It's recently come out that Microsoft's operating system slash advertising network slash global spyware tool has even greater spyware capabilities than we previously thought. You see, every single proprietary big tech cloud platform, and when I say cloud platform, I don't just mean cloud storage, but also things like email, chat apps, Microsoft Teams, and the software equivalents that their competitors have. All of these cloud platforms scan the contents of all of the files that you send through them. And of course, they scan the bodies of emails and stuff like that as well. But the point is, all plain text data that is sent through these platforms is analyzed, sometimes with the assistance of an AI that tries to identify what pictures or videos are of. CSAM, of course, is the common thing that companies say they are scanning for and fighting against. Because when you say that you're thinking of the children, a certain subset of the population that I guess doesn't really think at all will clap and cheer you on. Thank you, big government. Thank you, big tech, for caring for my children so that I don't have to. Why bother taking the time to be involved with your child's digital life and set up ways to monitor them or just have the openness with them to talk about the kind of stuff that they see and do online so that you can guide them through life? No, just let Microsoft's AI raise your kids. What could possibly go wrong? But anyway, the new bit of spookiness is on Microsoft's cloud platform. So when you send encrypted files to someone, like password-protected zip files, normally you can't see what the contents of those are. Well, if you send it through Microsoft's cloud platform, they're actually going to try to attempt to open and scan those password-protected files. Now, the way that they're doing this is actually pretty simple. Microsoft's already scanning all of the messages that you sent through their platforms and having an AI read it. So if you attach a password protected zip file and you say in the body of the email that the password to it is Bill Gates visited Epstein Island 36 times, well, then Microsoft already knows the password. Now, the solution to this also seems pretty simple and straightforward. Just don't tell your friend the password to the zip file in the same email that you send the file in. But who is to say that Microsoft won't just harvest that password from somewhere else? Maybe from a keylog that is built directly into Microsoft Defender. You see, the problem with Microsoft and other big tech companies' proprietary cloud scanning platforms is that we don't know all of these specific details about how they work. We can only get some details through a sort of black box testing, like what happened to the security researchers in this article here. Andrew Brandt, who works in malware analysis, he was getting these samples of malware that have been taken from infected systems and he then tries to reverse engineer the malware samples so he can understand how they work in order to help people better secure their systems and to mitigate the threat of future attacks since hackers have a tendency to reuse malware with minor adjustments made here and there for several years. So very important work, work that Microsoft probably benefits a lot from so that they can further secure their operating system. Well, Microsoft SharePoint kept flagging and then deleting the malware samples that he was trying to send to his colleagues, even though they were in password protected zip files because SharePoint's proprietary AI defense system also scans messages for potential passwords to encrypted files that you're sending on Microsoft's cloud system. And the same thing happened in Brandt's cloud storage because he was using Microsoft's OneDrive to back up password protected zip files containing more malware. So Microsoft was able to decrypt them, scan them, and then delete the files using presumably the same passwords that were extracted from SharePoint or his email since OneDrive doesn't have a body or subject header where you might put a password. So what this tells us, is once Microsoft gets a password from one of your encrypted files in any of their cloud systems endpoints, whether it's through 
email, whether it's through SharePoint, Teams, or anything that's under Microsoft Office 365, that password is gonna be used to decrypt the files whenever they show up in Microsoft systems in the future. And because these are Microsoft systems, the scanning and decrypting of your files is not going to stop because really the files aren't yours, the system is not yours. When you agree to Microsoft's end user license agreement, you're basically signing up for a form of digital serfdom where Microsoft is the Lord that is ruling over the peasant end users. The Lord makes the big decisions about how the farm is going to change, what kind of animals are gonna be on there or whatever. Uh, Microsoft collects your data and they sell it, just like the Lord collects the peasants' potatoes and wheat. And if one of Microsoft's peasants gets the bright idea to try to hide his potatoes inside of an encrypted container, then Lord Microsoft's AI knights are going to show up to delete your encrypted potatoes. So now, nobody gets to eat. Clearly, Microsoft Windows is not a usable operating system for this kind of cybersecurity research that Andrew was doing, which is kind of sad because historically, Windows has been so vulnerable to viruses, it's almost like they're overcompensating at this point with this cloud-based security that deletes your malware samples from the cloud, and not just from the cloud, but also from your hard drive. Uh, so hopefully he had a cold storage backup of that stuff somewhere. But luckily, there are Linux distros, like Kali Linux, that come pre-bundled with a lot of useful security tools. I'm actually kind of surprised that Andrew wasn't using that in the first place. Maybe he needed to use Windows for some reason. Uh, and of course, there is no cloud security on Kali Linux that's going to delete your precious files. But even if you don't do security research or malware analysis, you'd still be better off using a free and open source operating system like Linux Mint or Fedora for your daily computer usage, because at least then you're not going to be spied on with the free and open source operating systems. You aren't going to be bombarded with ads. And again, you don't have to worry about an AI deleting your files. So if you're tired of being a surf for Microsoft, Try live booting a Linux distro on your PC. You don't have to risk losing any data when you live boot Linux onto your computer or going through any type of complicated installation process that you might mess up. No, these days installing Linux is just as easy as setting up Windows when you buy a new computer from the store. So try it out today and you'll be able to experience true digital freedom. Like and comment, attack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.